Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, and especially welcome to video number seven in my Docker Essentials series. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to create your very own Docker images. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, this is going to be the final video in my Docker series, because at this point, when this video is over, I feel that I've taught you all of the basics that you need to know to create a stable foundation that you could build the rest of your knowledge on. But don't despair, I will be teaching you guys even more about Docker as time goes on. It's just that at this point, the beginner stuff is done, and I will move on to standalone videos about Docker going forward. But I've had a lot of fun in creating the series for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it too. So join me one last time as we explore the essentials of Docker. So to start off the process, we want to actually start from a container that's as close to what we want to achieve as possible. Now, for example, you could actually start with the Nginx container if that's what you want to run, but I'm going to show you the process more manually because I want to show you how to actually build everything up. So what I'm going to do is run the Ubuntu container again. I'll just run it with docker run it for interactive mode, and then the container name, of course, Ubuntu. And there we go, we have a shell. Now several times now, I have made changes to the Ubuntu container. I've exited and lost all those changes. So I'm going to make some changes again, but this time, I'm going to show you how to save those changes. So let's walk through all the changes that I want to make. So first of all, I need to run apt update. I need to make sure that the local repository index is fully synced with the servers. So I'll press enter there. That's pretty easy. Now another thing I want to do is actually install all available updates, and that's very important from a security standpoint, because if we don't have the latest patches, then our container is vulnerable. And that's as easy as running apt and then dist upgrade, just like that. And actually, everything is already up to date, which is great. Next, I'm going to install the Apache package. I thought that'd be fun because we already installed Nginx in the previous video, so let's go ahead and work through Apache as well. So apt and then install. And the package name for Apache in Ubuntu is simply Apache 2, just like that. I'll press enter to accept the defaults. And here I'll just go ahead and type in the codes to my location, as I've done several times now. And now we have Apache installed inside the container. Inside the container, we can check the status to see whether or not Apache is running by running slash Etsy slash init.d slash Apache2 and then the keyword status, just like that, it's not running. So if we change that to start, that actually starts the Apache web server. So now that's running. We can confirm that by checking the status again and it is running. And also, I'm going to install Vim, why not? I like to make sure that my preferred text editor is available if I ever need to use it. So I will simply run apt install vim nox. Yet again, let's get that installed. I'll just press enter. And there we go. So I've made a few changes. I've installed Apache and Vim. I've made sure that Apache is running. So we have some pretty decent changes inside this container that we probably might want to retain. Now, as you already know, if I exit this container, I lose all of those changes. I don't want to do that. But what I do want to do is disconnect from the container and still keep my changes. If I hold Control and then press P and then Q while still holding Control, like we've done before, I am now back on my local command shell. If I run Docker PS, we can see that it's actually still running. It's this one right here. This is the image that we use to create our new container or what we will use to create our new image. And this right here is the container ID. So how can we actually create a new image from this running container? It's actually pretty easy. So to finalize this, we will need that container ID, which we have right here. 
I'll copy that. And we will need to use a new command that I haven't shown you guys yet to actually turn our container into an image that we can reuse. And for that, we will actually run Docker. And then the keyword this time is going to be commit. That's the part that's new. And then I will paste in the ID number of that container that we want to use as a reference. And then let's give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name of LLTV and then slash Apache hyphen test. That's what I'm going to call the image colon. I'll give it a version number of 1.0, just like that. I'll press enter and we get an SHA-256 hash. And if we run Docker images, we can see that we actually have a container image right here with the same name that we gave it. So we know that the container image has been created. We have a tag of 1.0, which was right here. We added that. We have an image ID. And we can also see when that was actually created. So now what I will do is Docker and then stop. I'll paste in the container ID, this one right here. Now that's gone, and just for safe measure, I will also stop this one right here. So I will type stop and then DB, the first part of that container ID. So at this point, we should actually have nothing running. So Docker PS, and we have nothing running. And the reason why I wanted to make sure of that is because we had one container running that is using port 8080 on the host, and I'm intending to use that same port again. And if I already have a container attached to that port, I'm not going to be able to start another one and also have that one attached to that same port. So I just made sure that everything is stopped. But that's okay because we have an image now. So I can create a new container with that image and I will have all of those changes baked right in. So to do that, I will run docker and then run dash d dash it dash p for port. I wanna map port 8080 on the host to port 80 inside the container. And then the image that I want to use is the one that we've just created. LLTV slash Apache hyphen test colon 1.0. I'll press enter. Let's see what happens. Well, that certainly looks good. And I can see that the container ID is running here. So let's go back to the browser. So right here, I still have the page open from the previous example where I went over Nginx, the Nginx container. But actually, this is not going to work. If I refresh the page, well, as you can see here, nothing actually responds when I try to access this particular port. So let's see if we could get that fixed. And the reason why we weren't able to access Apache from within the container is because, well, Apache wasn't running. Why is it not running? And the reason for that is because we didn't set an entry point which is essentially, as I've mentioned earlier, an instruction to Docker about what command should be run when a new container is created from an image. So, Docker PS, we can see that that container is still running. Let's see if we can recommit that container and add an entry point command to it. So what I'm going to do is recall the previous command where we used Docker commit. We need to change the container ID to the one that it actually is right now, this one right here. We're going to change this version number to 1.1 just to make sure that it's different. What we'll do is add a new option right here, right before the ID, dash dash change equals, and inside the single quotes here, we'll type in all caps, entry point, and then in brackets, then Apache CTL in double quotes, comma, space, dash capital D, then foreground, no space, just like that. And I recommend you probably get this command from the wiki article that matches this video. It's linked in the description down below because this command is a bit long. But basically what we're doing is docker commit like we did last time, but we're going to change the entry point to be Apache CTL and then dash capital D foreground. And this is a list, even though this is a command that we can run on the shell technically, it's actually needing to be typed as a list here with each portion of the command in double quotes, as you see here, with a comma separating each element, and then the container ID like we had before. And then for the name, I just actually incremented the version number by 0.1, as you see. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. So far, that's promising. We check our images. We see that we have the old one right here, and then we have the new one. 
So before we run the new one though, we do have the original container running still, so we need to stop that one. Now that's stopped. So I will recall the command that we used originally to create a container from the original image, which is this one right here. I will change the version number to the new image that we've just created, the one that we've edited. Let's see if it works. And that's promising. So far, so good. We can see that it's running. We have a container ID here, and it is the correct image, so that's great. And we also see the actual command right here as well. So let's go ahead and see if it's working. So I'll go back down to my browser. Let's refresh the page and see if it works. And it does. Would you look at that? Now we have the Apache 2 default page before we had the Nginx default page. And then because we didn't have an entry point when we created the original image, we had nothing. It didn't even work. But now we were successfully able to add the entry point to an image. And that image can now be used to spin up a container with all of our settings anytime we want a new one with those settings. But actually, let's work on automating this entire process. This is going to be a lot of fun. So back here on the terminal, let's stop the container that's running. And then what I'm going to do right now is show you how to create an image from a text file called a Docker file. And although it's optional, just to be a little clean, I'm going to make a new directory here. I'll call it Docker files. Clever, I know. And I'll go inside that directory. And of course, the directory is empty because I've just created it. But what I want to do is create a Docker file here. I'll use nano. I normally use Vim, but nano is a bit easier to explain in a tutorial video. But what I want to do is create a text file called Docker file with a capital D. And regardless of what operating system you are running, the same applies. You basically just open whatever text editor you want. It could even be a GUI text editor, really doesn't matter. You want to create a Docker file named Docker file with a capital D like I'm doing here. So I'll press enter and we have the empty file. And again, Definitely check out the wiki article that is linked in the description down below. I'm going to type out everything and explain it, but sometimes it's easier just to copy and paste it. So the first line, we're going to type FROM in all caps. And this is where we set the container image that we want to start from. And I want to start from the Ubuntu container image. And then I'll type maintainer in caps. I'll type my name and then the email address. And then I'll go down a couple of lines here, and then I'll type a comment, which is just a hash symbol. Anything that starts with a hash symbol will be ignored when we go to build this image. And I'll type a note, what we want to do. Update packages. And then for this, we're going to type run in all caps, because when we go to build this, this keyword is recognized by Docker and tells it that we want to run something. We want to run something inside the container, so we will run apt update semicolon, and then apt dist hyphen upgrade dash y. And the dash y option just assumes yes. That way we don't get a confirmation prompt that says, are you sure you want to update the packages? This will just automatically choose yes when that appears. So then here I'll type install packages and then run again, apt install, and dash y serves the same purpose here as it did before, just automatically assumes yes. And the packages that I want to install are Apache 2, and then vim hyphen nox. And then here, and then I'll go down a few more lines. We're going to set the entry point. And these comments are probably unnecessary because I think it's fairly self-explanatory what I'm doing, but you get the point. We're going to set entry point in all caps. Entry point is going to be Apache 2 CTL dash capital D, and then foreground in all caps. And I'm going to run this, but I don't want you to run this just yet. So basically just watch me run it because it's going to fail. And I'm going to show you why it's going to fail. And then I'll show you how to correct it because I'm going to run into a problem that a lot of new people actually run into. And I see this happen all the time. So control O to save the file, control X to exit out. To build this, I'm going to run Docker build and dash T to set a tag. And the tag is going to be LLTV and then a slash. And I will call this Apache hyphen test, just like before, but I'll change the version number to 1.2.
and then we will press space at the end, at a period, because basically we are referencing the current working directory. We're telling Docker, you will find the Docker file in this current working directory. That's what the period means. And then I'll press enter. Let's see what happens. We can see that it's running. So, so far, so good. Now, this is the problem that I was referring to earlier. And I did say it was going to fail, but essentially it's causing us to need to type something. And this can fail, but thankfully it's actually asking us to respond to this prompt. But we really don't want to have a prompt like this, do we? So I'm going to press Control C to break out and just cancel the entire process. And let's bring that file back up on the screen and see what we can do to actually fix this problem. And the problem is, it's a non-interactive process, or at least it should be a non-interactive process to create a container image. You really shouldn't have any prompts come up, especially if you plan on using some kind of automated build service, CI, CD, something like that. You really don't want to have any prompts come up that are forcing you to respond because that prevents you from being able to completely automate this solution. So what do we do? So what I'm going to do is add a new section here. For the comment, I'll just put skip prompts, then ARG, I want to set an argument. And this is an argument inside the container. In all caps, we will do Debian underscore front end, just like that. And we will set that equal to non-interactive. And that should actually fix the problem. Now, you would probably think that adding the dash Y option would be enough. I mean, honestly, that's kind of what we're trying to do with the dash Y option. We're trying to bypass prompts. We don't want to be prompted for anything. So this gets rid of the are you sure, yes or no prompt. But that's not enough in and of itself. We actually need to set this variable. It's Debian specific. And if you didn't already know, Ubuntu is built on top of Debian. So it still applies to Ubuntu as well. We want to set the mode to non-interactive. Just don't bother us about anything. That's essentially what we're saying here. So I'll save the file and exit out. And let's try to build this one more time and see if it bypasses all of the prompts. If all goes well, this command should result in an image without us having to do anything. Let's see. And wow, look at that. Everything has been successfully built. We weren't prompted for anything. It just worked. And now we actually have the image right here at the top. The tag is version 1.2. It is the image that we were working with, the one that we were creating. But we also have some other images here. For example, the 1.1 and the 1.0. And those images are okay. This one right here, you know, that doesn't actually work because there was no entry point there. And this one was created with the automated process, but we did fix that problem. But this 1.2, that's actually the one that we want people to use if this actually was an application that people would want to use, but you get the idea. We may want to consider removing images, and I haven't shown you guys how to do that yet, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So let's actually remove this image, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to grab the image ID, copy that, and I'm going to type Docker and then RMI, short for remove image. And then I'll paste that one right here. Let's press enter. And according to this, it's actually in use by a container. It's actually in use by a stopped container. And I wanted you guys to see this because, well, it is an actual problem that you'll have to work through because even though we don't have a container with that ID, which you can see here, we have no containers at all. I run docker ps and then dash a. And that shows all the other containers, the ones that were running at one point. We could probably find that ID here. So I'll scroll up to the top here. We're looking for something that starts with 5A5, and here it is. So I will actually grab that container ID right here, because even though it stopped, it technically still exists in the background. You have a history of it. So we can actually run Docker RM, not RMI. RMI is for removing images. We want to remove the container. And then I'll paste the ID here. So if you are curious how you can actually delete a container from your history, this is how you do it. And notice that it gave me the container ID as a prompt. 
That tells us that that container is gone. So let's see if we can actually remove that image now. Okay, so I guess it's in use by another container. And the container ID begins with AC9, so we could do docker ps dash A, then we can grep for AC9, and there it is. So we could run docker rm AC9, and it's gone. Can we remove the image now? Now we can. So sometimes you have to work through the process of actually removing previously run containers because Docker works in layers, and if a container was used in a previous layer, or if an image actually references a previous container, you might have to work through this scenario. But anyway, that image should actually now be gone. And as you can see here it is, we have version 1.0, we don't have version 1.1. We should probably remove this one too, but I'm not going to bore you with walking through the process of doing that yet again, and you know, checking all of the containers removing the containers and then removing the image, I think you get the idea. And in the real world, you may not actually want to remove historical images because it's probably the case that your company might want to keep those historical versions. But in my case, this is not a production app, so I really don't care. I just want to clean up my local system here. But anyway, we don't have any containers that are running currently, so why don't we go ahead and create a container with the newest version of our image. So I'll go ahead and recall the docker run command from a while back, and here it is. So I'll change the last digit here to 2 because we used the version number of 1.2. I'll press enter. We can see that it's now running. And I'll refresh the page. You can see that it still works. So now we have an actual image that we can use, and we were able to use an automated process to create this image, which is pretty cool. So there you go. The Docker Essential series has now come to a close. I've had a ton of fun creating this content for you guys, and I hope it helped you learn the essentials of Docker. Now, if you want to help me out, if you found this series helpful, please click that like button. And better yet, please share this series with all of your colleagues. Spread the knowledge. That would really help me out. But anyway, again, I'll be creating even more content around Docker very soon. But until then, please click that subscribe button and you'll be the first to see any new content that I come out with and I have some great content coming. Stay tuned. But anyway, thanks so much for watching and have an awesome day.